What's up guys, Mike from Rockville. We have a very exciting video for you based on the comments in this last video. Yes, we do actually go through all of the comments. There are so many of them. We try our best to respond to as many as we can, but there are just so many, but that's awesome. Keep them coming. Now, before I go on, I want to point something out. There's a lot of people who are saying uh, like nice clap back or like that we're going after people. We are not going after anyone in these videos. You know, EXO and Big D Wiz, we have nothing but love for those guys. They've done so much for the car audio community and I cannot say enough good things about them we watch their videos we've been watching their videos for a very long time the point of these videos are we as a company we want to respond to people who have questions about our products and all the content that we are creating are actually based on real-life questions we are going to answer your questions by doing scientific tests to show you that everything we are saying is factual in today's test we are answering questions from comments that look like this Basically, the gist of the comments was in our other test where we ran a canine subwoofer for an hour on both the DB14 and the DB15, why was the term lab never hitting a thousand watts? Well, the point of the video is to answer that question. And that starts with us showing you guys a concept of impedance versus frequency in subwoofer. Now, what that means is at different frequencies, the subwoofer loads the amp at different impedances. So a higher impedance would actually output less wattage from the amplifier. This is very evident when music is playing with all the different frequencies and you can see it jumping around on the term lab. But I know everything I'm saying sounds a little humble jumble, so let me show you this visually. So let's get to it. All right, so we are just about set up over here. Before we get into the impedance versus frequency of the subwoofer, we want to show you something else. Let's go through the setup really quick. We have an old classic, an Alpine MRX M110. This is a 2 ohm 1100 watt amp, and at 4 ohm, it should output around 650 watts. Sam, why don't you show us a little bit of what's going on here and what we're doing right now? Sure. Uh, what we have over here is, uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, we, we have the amplifier, which is, puts out 1100 watts at 2 ohms. Uh, we have uh, non reactive loads, um, otherwise called dummy loads. Um, right over here and what we're going to be able to do with that is we could basically run any frequency through the amplifier and see the actual um, wattage. And so this is a little bit different from a subwoofer because remember a subwoofer plays different impedances at different frequencies. Exactly so right. in this case we are able to consistently play two ohms no matter what the frequency is. Okay so what we have over here is um, we have our uh, scope meter and um, what we're going to do is we're gonna we're gonna run the gain on the amplifier right up until clipping, and hopefully we'll see uh, approximately 1,100 watts when we put that two ohms. So I'm gonna set my my uh, load my load up to two ohms over here, and uh, we have a 40 hertz tone that we're gonna be running through this once I get my phone working. Right now, 40 hertz. Are you reading 40 hertz, Mike? Not yet. Let's just yeah, get this working. Uh, there, there you go. You go. 40, 40 hertz, hertz right over there, and uh, let's uh, turn it up go and pay attention to the wattage and uh, Z over here is going to be the the ohms so we have the wattage and right over here you can see we're right at two ohms all right so I'm turning it up right over here on the scope meter and we're going to go just to right there it is. That's, clipping. that's clipping right over there you see you guys saw it you see that clip that's clipping we're gonna back it down a tiny drop till we get it kind of clean let's find exactly where that point is no, I went too far back. I'm sorry. All right, let's see if we can get this. All right, that's right there. That's the beginning of clip. So that's about one percent THD right you see, over there. Right at 1100. Right at 1100 watts. watts. Okay. So that's perfect. At two ohms, we're at 1100 watts. I'm gonna change it gonna to it four to ohms. Okay. We still got our 40 hertz tone running to the amp. All right, let's run it. There it is. There's a clip. Okay, let's back it down a little bit. I would say it's not clipping yet. Let's see the beginning of the clip point. Should be right about there. Let's say right about there is clipping. All right, let's back it up a little bit. You got this. 690. Let's back it up a drop right there. About 650. Okay, 640. So right over here, you can see clean signal. This is max before clipping that we're able to get. 
And this makes sense. So this amp was true to its specs. It's at two ohm, it's 1100 watts. And at four ohm, it's about 650 watts. Now, what does this mean for us? Any impedance that's between four and two ohms, it's going to be within the watt range of 650 watts to 1100 watts. And any impedance that is higher than four ohms is actually going to be less than 650 watts. Yeah, Mike, and actually um, the subwoofer, while we have it pre-wired right now to uh, two ohm low, uh, once it starts getting frequency, um, virtually all frequencies that it runs are actually gonna run higher impedance than two ohms. You might see it go two and a half ohms, three, four, five, maybe even seven and eight, nine ohms at certain frequencies as we get towards uh, FS or resonance frequency. We'll explain what, what that means in a, in, a, in a different video. But the point is we're gonna, we're gonna actually see impedance changing with frequency when we put the subwoofer in. Exactly, so let's get the subwoofer set up and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about right now. All right, so we got the subwoofer hooked up to the amp now. Everything's being metered through TermLab. But earlier, we took our Clio and we ran a impedance versus frequency curve for this subwoofer in the box. Now, if you look at the graph, you'll notice that this, there's two peaks on this graph. So the first peak is actually for the subwoofer. The second peak is for the ports. Now, what does this graph mean? Well, you can see the x-axis is for frequency and the y-axis is actually for the impedance. So using the y-axis and the x-axis, I can plot the curve of this subwoofer and how it will play at different impedances depending on the frequency. So I know that sounds like a lot of humble jumble, but I can show you this visually. So what we're going to do is Sam is going to generate a bunch of different test tones, sine waves at different frequencies, and we're going to look at the Z, which is the impedance. We're also going to look at what that correlates to in real watts. Guys, remember, as you see the impedance number higher, you're going to see the wattage is going to be lower. That's always how amplifiers work. All right, so we're gonna just start playing tones now. Uh, now I want you to keep your eye on the term lab. Z again is ohms, and this is the watts over here. So you're gonna focus on the ohms and the different watts. So we're gonna play different sine waves at different frequencies, and I want you to see what that does to the impedance and also to the watts. So let's start with 40 hertz. All right, 40 hertz, here we go. Set 40, 40 hertz. All right, so at 40 hertz, we are at 5.6, 530 watts. So that's 5.6 at 530 watts. Okay, let's go up like five. Let's go to 45. Let's play 45 now. So now you see our ohms went up. We're at 7.5 and we're at 400 watts. So you saw our watts went down while our ohms went up, right? So just going up five hertz, you saw what a change that made to our watts and our ohms. Hey, you wanna play some more? You wanna uh, play? I guess we'll try 60. right around 650 watts. Yep. It's perfectly in line with what we were getting off our load bank there. But what are we trying to illustrate? So we are trying to show you that at different frequencies, when you have different impedances, you're going to get a different amount of wattage. This was actually one of the, uh, uh, one of the most asked questions uh, in our uh, one hour uh, uh, test video of the K9 woofers. Uh, the amplifier, this over here is an 1100 watt amplifier. Okay, it's an Alpine. This, this back in the day was probably a $500 amp. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty high quality amplifier. This amplifier, even running right before clipping, as you can see, is only going to produce 650 watts at that 4 ohm. And that, by the way, is, remember, this is a 2 ohm subwoofer. The resting impedance of it's a dual voice coil, 4 ohm, wired in parallel, which means its resting impedance is 2 ohms. And still you saw that. So that hopefully should answer uh, some of the questions that we got about the, the previous uh, video when we showed uh, the, the wattage fluctuation on the 1000 and the 1500 watt RMS uh, Rockwell amplifiers.
I know your heads are probably spinning right now, so let's go over to our recap and talk about everything we saw in these tests. All right, let's talk about what we saw in our test. First, we tested the amp with both a two ohm and a four ohm dummy load to show the amp was true to specs of 1100 watts at two ohms and 650 watts at four ohms. This gave us an idea of the wattage range that would occur between the impedance of two to four ohms. The wattage range was between 650 watts to 1100 watts. So if there was a load in between two to four ohms, the wattage would fall somewhere in the middle. Then we showed you guys the impedance versus frequency curve for the 12 inch dual 4 ohm K9 we were testing. In the curve the X axis is the frequency and the Y axis is the impedance and any point along the curve is showing you the impedance of the sub at that specific frequency. We played three different frequencies just so you could see that impedance really does change for different frequencies. This means wattage output will change with different frequencies because the impedance is changing. Now think about music. Music has so many frequencies playing all throughout the song. That's why in our last video when we were doing a real world test with music, you saw the numbers jumping around because the subwoofer impedance is changing due to the different frequencies being played from the music. In addition to that, within each frequency being played, when the song is being recorded and mastered, each frequency is being boosted or cut at different amounts of decibel levels. Due to all these factors, when you have an 1000 watt rated amplifier going to an 1000 watt rated sub, the clamped wattage that is metered will never be a thousand watts unless you're playing a clip signal. Now keep in mind that most manufacturers are not rating their subwoofers to withstand test tone for long periods of time at the rated power. Now there is one other variable to consider besides impedance alone that will also make your clamp meter wattage lower. This is called power factor where you take into account the phase angle of voltage and current. Power factor also changes with frequency however normally it doesn't affect wattage output as much as the impedance of the specific frequency does. But we will get to that in a whole other video, so don't worry about that right now. Now I know a lot of you are still thinking, Mike, I want to see a thousand watts on the term lab. We have another test video coming out where we do the same exact test that we did in a previous video with the much bigger amps, just so you could see a thousand watts, the most dynamic parts of the song. Now most people will either use an a thousand watt or a fifteen hundred watt amp when you're matching it up to an a thousand watt sub. I know for SP you might go for a bigger amp, but due to what we learned in this video, in order to get that meter to play a thousand watts without clipping, you're going to need to use a bigger amp when you take into account the subwoofers changing impedances at different frequencies. But don't worry about all of that, we will get to that in a future video. For now, please subscribe, like, and comment what you want to see next. Remember, we are taking your comments and making videos to answer all of the questions that you might have. We're also still running our destroyer giveaway, so leave a comment if you want to be entered for that. Check out the rest of the videos on our channel. We have content almost every week. As always, guys, I am Mike from Rockville. I will see you next time.